Hello everyone, Elliot from ESC Fan TV here, and we, the final Maisie Festival is literally hours away, so we thought what a better time to get Gustav Darlander, SVT Melody Festival expert, back for us. Hello Gustav, how are you? Hello, it's uh, great to be with you once more. Uh, I was with you last year and um, now I'm in my home, obviously, as <laughs> most people. And uh, I prepared a, a Eurovision studio with this, uh, it's like a cardboard from 2016 when we hosted. And I even got the IKEA uh, lamp, which oh, is very similar <laughs> to the logo. <laughs> but, <laughs> Uh, I'm uh, I'm uh, moving in a couple of months, so uh, so I, I changed a lot of stuff around in my apartment, yeah. and that's why the uh, IKEA lamp is in this sorry state. <laughs> well, as you say, like it's a very different year this year to maybe festival, and you're normally there touring with the with the company. So how has it been different for you having to stay safe and staying in your home in Stockholm? Yeah, I had different uh, tasks this year uh, because uh, we can't work the way that we're usually working. And uh, SVT Online were uh, a lot about interacting with people on social media, which I can do, but uh, I'm good at other stuff too and maybe better at other stuff. So I focused on that and I wrote effect articles for a press website that SVT put out. Uh, it's media.melodifestivalen.se. Uh, and uh, I wrote something that I called uh, the contest Bible, uh, where you can find all the facts on the competing entries, which I hope is still useful for the final. <laughs> Brilliant. And obviously, obviously tomorrow's the final, but we've had a stellar cast this year. So we've had, you know, Jessica Anderson come back, Tess Merkel, Eric, Danny, Dotter, the Mamas, the list goes on and on. So as a Swedish native and a Melody Festival fan, what is it like for you seeing all these returning artists come back in one year? Um, it's been, a, a, as you said, a very stellar year and it's, it's fantastic. Uh, a lot of people are saying that this is a very, very strong final. I heard that Swedish Daily Aftonblad had called it the best final in 12 years and uh, uh, some others said that maybe it's the best final ever. Uh, because they're obviously because of the pandemic, a lot of um, uh, artists were interested in taking part in Melody Festival and this year. And um, then SVT had a lot of artists to choose from and could pick the ones with the best songs, perhaps. And uh, um, also maybe because of the pandemic, people were voting safe. So um, there has been very few upsets and these um, strong contenders all made it into the final. And that's where you, we can speculate a lot and have a lot of different possible outcomes and people love that but I don't think it's that exciting really when you're trying to predict the final. <laughs> and, so, like, and has that made your job any easier or difficult or more difficult seeing like a certain pattern falling which is you know let's be honest the biggest names from each semi-final have advanced you know Eric, the Mamas, Dotter, Danny they were all expected from namesake alone so how's that you know affected you trying to predict from your position like who can and can't qualify? Um, I, I usually I'm doing like uh, YouTube uh, videos and uh, stuff like every day when I'm working on location, but uh, this year I haven't, so it's not been part of my job to predict anything. So <laughs> it doesn't doesn't affect my job, but it, it was easy to predict the ones that would advance to the finals because it always happened the way we thought that it would happen. Uh, finally, in the second chance, we got an upset with uh, Clara Kling and Strum who's, uh, I think she's currently number uh, two on uh, Sweden top 50 um, among the Melody Festival and songs um, with her entry Behöver inte dig idag. And this was very much a surprise for, for a lot of people. But, you know, it, she has uh, done an interesting journey and um, has a powerful backstory and is very sincere on stage. And um, uh, some people believe that she's a contender for the top four in the final. Uh, let's see what happens there. <laughs> and that actually comes on to my point quite nicely because obviously Clara Klingenstrom uh, was a name I had never heard of before Melody Festival and I knew nothing about her and going into Andre Johnson not many people expect her to qualify so what has it been like seeing her almost come out of nowhere and now be a contender as you said she's storming the Spotify charts as well what has this buzz been like because this seems to have, be very rare that a debutant comes through and does so well especially singing a song in Swedish yeah, um, uh, as you say, especially singing a song in Swedish, usually you have like one every year and we didn't have that. And maybe there was like 
an urge for for something to to happen because we had also expected results uh, but the wider audience maybe didn't expect to uh, to go this well he won swedish idol but um, you know, only one fourth or one third of the people um, of the, the viewing figure of Melody Festival and it reflects on, on Swedish Idol. So most people doesn't know about him and he hasn't released music. So he was also a surprise. But when it comes to Clara Klingström, uh, she has um, a very strong lyric about that. I don't need you today. And um, she told uh, about the meaning of this um, before the second chance, finally. And um, uh, she has had a, a terrible year. She also told that she had drug and alcohol problems previously. Her father died last year and she was in a relationship where she was physically abused, where her family just pulled her out of that relationship. And um, uh, finally, you know, she, she, she was really on the absolute bottom and uh, has, has come up again. And, and she's singing a, a little bit about this in the song. Uh, so it's a very serious um, uh, backstory and, and the history that she has. And, uh, and it's very easy to feel for her. And then she has this very, very good song, uh, which is uh, like, um, uh, it, it also, it appeals to people who like Melody Festival music, but also to people who like, um, like music outside of Melody Festival and who just thinks it's a nice streaming song. There are, are other Swedish singers that have a similar kind of music who doesn't usually take part in Melody Festival. And so she ticks many boxes. Okay, well, it's amazing to hear that, you know, she's still standing and able to compete given the year she's had. So I took my hat to her for that. So obviously moving on to the final now, we have some big hitters in there. You have the top two from last year of the Mamas and Dotter. You have Danny Salcedo, who has been a runner-up twice. Alex Sada, who won 10 years ago. Um, I guess my first point is, in Sweden, what is the likelihood and probability of the Mamas winning again? Because there seems to be a big discourse that the Mamas by right should go because they won and didn't get to participate in Eurovision. But on the flip side, people are saying their song isn't as strong as Move and that could be their downfall. But what what are Sweden saying? Is it likely that the mummers can win tomorrow night? Uh, it, a lot of people are saying that you can can never count the mummers out of the the <laughs> you know winning discussion um, because um, they have this uh, force when they go on stage. They have their voices, and maybe you don't know how this um, psychological uh, sympathy will play out. That there are people who believe that. They should have uh, been guaranteed a, a spot in in Eurovision this year, and Melody Festival should basically have been cancelled or something. Um, but obviously, that's not an option in Sweden. Um, so, so, but I think that this debate has died down very much, and that people are, oh, it's a new year, new songs. Um, so, uh, it's a, you know, at this point, I believe that there is just one strong contender for the win um, and uh, the mamas uh, are a few steps behind like they are like number four on on the list but um, maybe I should tell you which uh, contender I believe is the one who's going to take it. Well, that was my follow-up question now you said yeah. that who do you think is going to take the crown tomorrow night? <laughs> Yeah, uh, well, uh, it's it's um, uh, if you look at the odds, it's obviously Tussa uh, with voices, who's um, number one. And uh, I was looking right now at the odds, and uh, uh, at the moment he has um, a sixty percent chance of winning. And when you look at the odds, uh, this is among twelve entries. This is uh, huge. I don't know if even Jon Lundvik was up there with "Too Late for Love." Um, so. It's, it's very, very hard to see for me that someone will actually beat Tusse at this point. Uh, you could see in his heat that the votes were very high. The amount of money donated to charity was very high. People discovered something. People who had um, journalists who, who had commentaries, uh, you know, this commentary fields uh, management during the heat said that uh, it was it just exploded, that everyone was Tusse. Uh, and um, uh, also, he's a, he's a great uh, vocalist and uh, juries uh, like that. Um, there was a, a pre-poll, a small pre-poll done, um, which was age-based. Uh, the podcast feed was Schlager in Sweden did it. And Tussi got 12 points from all age groups, except the youngest, where he got 10 points. Uh, so, you know, I believe that the outcome is like this. 
you have international jury voting and then you have the people voting in the final. If TUSA is number one or very close to number one after the jury vote, we basically know that TUSA mm -hmm. is going to win it. If TUSA is not up there after the jury vote, then it's an exciting night. But uh, I don't want to ruin it for you and perhaps I'm completely wrong. So um, let's, let's keep the suspense going. Okay. Last thing, all the last two weeks, the names bouncing back and forth for who's going to win has been, you know, it's mainly TUSA and Eric, but everyone daughter's starting to get a bit of support the mamas have still got in there you know people the surge of clara people saying oh could she potentially do it so i think there's still a, a bit of you know, optimism and excitement about what's actually going to happen because personally i can't i would love to sit to win but i can't put my hand in heart and say he's going to win D despite all the data going towards him i refuse to believe it till it happens <laughs> because i don't want to it's <laughs> it's nerve-wracking yeah, I believe that that many Eurovision fans have this idea because, you know, he, he hasn't got this uh, momentum when it comes to the Eurovision fandom like Dotter has, for example. She has so many fans and uh, people are, are fans since before, since long ago, or at least since last year. And um, so, so they want her to win. And then Eric Saade, obviously, uh, had this, this great Eurovision um, run with Popular in uh, 2011. And... Um, has this uh, a bit more narrow pop song. Uh, I have a hard time to see that a very wide um, audience across the age groups will vote for him in the popular vote in the final. But who knows? The, the song is streaming well. Um, basically, Eric Sade is the only possible contender to Tussa in the final. If you look at the odds and the streaming and the, the general you know, image that you get from everything. Okay, and earlier this week, as you announced on social media, that Melody Festival in tomorrow is going to have English commentary. Um, I believe that's the first time that, that is going to be English commentary. Um, I can't remember if we mentioned this last year or not, but we were definitely hoping for a translation whilst the show was going on. So how important is it that you have now got this English commentary going over the main commentary for the international viewers? It's really nice. Um, uh, Melody Festival has this very intense international following uh, it's not big compared to the Swedish audience, obviously, but uh, there are many people who feel very strongly for, for the contest. And uh, this has been a debate for many years in SVT that we would like to do this, but do we have the you know, budget to do it? And where should we take this money to do it? And, and so on. Uh, and finally, they find a way to do it. Um, maybe since I have fewer hours this year, we get the English <laughs> commentary instead. Who knows? Um, but it's uh, it's a Swedish uh, journalist called Bella Quist, I believe, who's going to do the commentary together with, uh, uh, pardon my pronunciation, Olivia Le Podevin, 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 uh British uh, journalist. <laughs> I mean, your British is better than my Swedish, so we'll leave it there. <laughs> I won't criticize you on it. <laughs> And obviously, last night it became public news that um, Mon Zelmelo, uh, the host for tomorrow night, um, has openly said he wants to come back and compete and win Melody Festival because he wants to win Eurovision again. Uh, as a Swede, um, how do you feel about that? Because obviously, he, he gave you your last victory with Heroes. It was an, an amazing performance. But he's been away from Sweden for real, quite a few years now, lives in the UK over here. So how do you think him coming back into Melody Festival and even when it happens will resonate with Swedes? Oh, that would be great. Um, I was also a little excited when I saw that. Uh, he has said this for, for many years. He has never said that, no, I'm not going to come back. He, he has always said that, yeah, I think I'm going to come back because I can't stay away from this forever uh, because he loves the contest. Uh, he's, uh, he's just like one of us fans. Um, and uh, he said that, now he said it a little bit differently because he said that he wants to uh, bring a contender to win Eurovision again. He, he wants to be uh, like uh, Johnny Logan and win uh, two times. And that means that he can't wait that long and he has to bring something really exciting. And I think that's great news for, for all the, the Swedish pop fans. Um, and it would be a great anticipation to see if that will happen and what he will come up with. Um, so, yeah, it's exciting news. Brilliant. Well, any any last points you want to say, Gustav, before we wrap up? Is there anyone you think we should be watching out for tomorrow in the final, um, apart from Tissé, obviously? Have you heard anything about staging that might be changing? Um, what should we look out for tomorrow night as a, sh as, as a whole with the show? 
Well, I could mention a little bit about the staging that uh, we have a few changes in, in the shows. Uh, Dotter will, will have, um, she has gloves with uh, LED lights on them that she will use uh, to great effect, I believe, in um, the performance. Um, so she has more of a, a gimmick than she had in the heat. Uh, we'll see which effect this has. Um, I'm also excited to see that the man who did Mons um stage uh, show in Eurovision 2015 with Heroes, uh, he's going to be on stage, Benke Rydman, uh, because he's dancing with uh, Dani Sacedo in uh, Dante Danza, uh, first out in the final, because he's uh, the staging designer for that entry. Oh, brilliant. And so we'd also hear that um, Fledgelik Lehman is doing the staging for Ireland this year as well. So it will be exciting to put a face to the name because I have no idea who he is. I've just heard he did Heroes. So I was like, ah, he knows yeah. what he's doing then. <laughs> he, he is brilliant. He, he also did Eric Sardis, popular Benke Riedman. So uh, he's fantastic. Brilliant. I need to ask, actually, forgot about this. Danny Salcedo staging. You've got a lot going on. He's in a box and you've got lots of different words on the boxes. What does it mean to someone who can't speak Swedish? Because it's just a lot of words otherwise. <laughs> uh, oh yeah, that, that makes sense. Yeah, it, I believe he's mimicking a bar setting. So it's, it's set like drinks uh, and stuff like that. Um, at least on, on some rehearsals he had this. And then he says uh, LP, uh, you know, it's like it, it's stuff, but it's just cardboard. Um, and then it says, uh, don't write anything here. And then it says, uh, someone crossed it out and wrote Sada and wrote the heart. Uh, because Danny has, he, he is a bit humorous when it comes to this. Well, Eric Sade is in it to win it. Danny is not in it to win it. He's just in it to do something creative and, and maybe score a hit. Um, so there's a lot of stuff there. And he had a phone number, uh, which was supposed to be a joke to a friend of his in the heat. Uh, but he wrote the last digit, I believe, uh, very sloppily. And it, it turned out that a lot of people thought that it was like one instead of seven or the other way around. And then they called the, the wrong number and called some girl in south of Stockholm called Madeleine, who got hundreds of phone calls and was very mad. Uh, poor girl. Um, so, yeah, you can do a lot of cardboard boxes. Oh, I hope Daddy has personally apologized to her about that. <laughs> Me too. I hope so. Well... Thank you, Gustav, for coming on. That was amazing to speak to you. Um, we shall see if your prediction and the Swedish Jaws are right and Tissa takes the win. As always, a big, big, big thank you for coming on. And we shall see in just a few hours' time who will win at Melody Festival in 2021 and represent Sweden at Eurovision. Big thank you, Gustav. Um, it's a pleasure. Thank you. <laughs>